I love this show. Buddy Daddy's episode 4 not only was the most enjoyable episode for me, it just hit that sweet spot, that nice blend of Hitman meets Family Man, and truly PA Works is just such a... I can't thank the studio for existing enough because what they're making these days is unlike any other studio right now. They're just doing things different, they're doing whatever they feel like, and in doing so, Buddy Daddy's comes along, melts our heart, makes us pull our hair out alongside both Papa Ray and Papa Kazuki because... Raising a kid can be chaos, and I mean, the fact that even the creator went out of their way to, like, research how parents deal with kids and stuff, and just, like, the type of shenanigans that they'll do, it just hits so different. I actually had tears of joy from just laughing so hard at one particular moment in this episode. So when they initially get into daycare, right, so we have this this girl, Anna, right, and she's basically like, hey, did you bring the book that she writes in or whatever? And our poor bastard who was just struggling like, it's been so bad, I just need a break, we stayed up all night doing this or that, and she just casually laughs like, okay, yeah, this is a stressed parent, but yeah, we're more looking for the child to basically give us her thoughts and things like that, and he's just looking like, what in the actual, after then just casually saying like, hey, your lunch, you know, we can't have this lunch here, just with what's going on. It's just, this show is so funny, it's so badass in terms of combat at times, but it's just such an adorable family story. Now, I do have a full live reaction to today's episode available on my Patreon, definitely was a fun one to react to, so consider supporting if you want to see that, but yeah, Buddy Daddy's we're four episodes in. I think we've seen a good variety of emotional, heart-tugging, like, holy, that is dark, to very fun hijinks, and I think this episode just perfectly encapsulates everything I like about this show. While it definitely doesn't have, like, heavy hitman action drama or anything, it still was relevant in terms of our girl casually just being like, oh yeah, you know, papas, they just go and they clean up the streets, or yeah, it's actually a real gun. He's like, no, 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 it's, it's a fake gun. It's just... The way they can blend that, because a child is innocent, a child has no filter, so if a child is under the impression that maybe you do bad things but they're not actually bad because you tell me, it's going to come up in natural conversation. And the way they get around it, not by scolding her or punishing her, but more so coming up with ways that she's in on it, so being like, listen, just piggyback off me, agree with what I'm saying, but don't say anything yourself. It's really cute how they get around those little kind of heartaches, because... Really, they just, they needed a break, man. Not only could they not have jobs, because, well, we saw what happened. Last time they tried to take a job and left her at home, well, she tagged along and the mission was an absolute failure. So, the only way they're going to be able to continue to be employed is by sending her to daycare. The only way they could have made that scene any better initially when the truck rolled by after they're just so exhausted she's playing on the playground is if basically it was like a sunset and you had like the mood lighting come in and kind of like funnel in just like almost like God shining a light on the truck being like your prayers have been answered there is hope there is that light at the end of the tunnel but it's great because I mean it's a hard thing because immediately I recognize like okay they have no paperwork how are they going to get around it and then once we see what the requirements was like how are you supposed to say here's my normal income i'm a hitman like it just ain't gonna work out so i was glad that they went the forgery route but the fact that the first place it just did not work out you knew it wasn't going to anyway because in the opening you can see who clearly was going to be the daycare kind of person and unless anna who we turn out to know who it is now was like just a general worker there was just no way the first place was gonna work out but I honestly wasn't expecting by the second place, too. I thought they were going to go through six or seven before they found a place that would accept them. And, you know, the whole concept of like, oh, so you're both are daddies. Do you like having two papas? And she's like, oh, I absolutely love it. I just wasn't quite expecting the bullying angle. And I think the bullying angle was handled really well. It wasn't like pointless, like petty drama for no reason. It's something that makes sense. So Kazuki doesn't go out of his way to buy name brand clothing because he thinks it's the best or he thinks the, the name tag makes it a better quality. He just thought that's where you need to go. Like he just is spending an arm and a leg. He gets all of them this expensive clothing. And because of that, she sticks out like a sore thumb because they all look rather average. Of course, the moms are looking at sugar daddies being like, mm, I want a piece of that because he would definitely set me up for life. The kids are like, well, she can't get her rich clothing dirty, so she can't play in the sandbox. We can't risk accidentally tripping her while playing a soccer match or something and it rips and we get in trouble because that dress probably costs more than their food bill for the month, right? So the fact that she just gave it her all, she went day after day, you saw her breaks more and more and more. And I thought the way they got around that was so clever, because not only do they then discover the luxury of cheap clothing, 
I mean, it was a kid in a candy shop. They all were like, holy, this is only 400 yen. I mean, <laughs> we couldn't even buy a portion of a sock for that price at the other location. The fact that they all just kind of like accepted that there's more to the world than like high-end luxuries, but rather as long as they're happy, as long as they're fed and clothed, like that's all they really need. They don't need to spend that arm and a leg to be able to stand out. Instead, just look average and you'll blend in way better. The fact that they got around the whole bullying angle, not because it was bullying in the way of like, we hate you because you're different, but more so they were scared because she just looked rich and they weren't, right? So it's a different type of bullying in a way. It's kind of being like excluded without necessarily trying to be mean about it, but in doing so, she felt like she was the outcast. By having the cool dad moment, which I thought maybe they would be like, ooh, you know, your dad's too old, we don't want him playing kickball with us or anything. Instead, they just thought he was so cool because he was doing these moves that they've never seen before, and in doing so, she ended up getting friends and was accepted. It was such a nice icebreaker. They let the drama be there relevant enough because you knew she had to be an outcast. I mean, I was saying it as I was watching, like, I mean, she's going to stick out. I wasn't sure if it would be because of the clothing or because of something else, maybe just because she was the new girl. But the fact that they had it there, they let it be relevant, but then they resolved it without making a drama cliffhanger for no reason. We have plenty of drama to work with. You killed her biological father. The mother doesn't seem like the greatest of persons. Like, there's a lot of drama you can work with already, but there is drama that should naturally pop up just by raising a kid like this, and they're doing a good job. They got the drama in terms of the chaos in the home where she just is a... She's a tornado of energy, man, and that's, that's children for you right there. It's realistic. But then you also have the drama of the new girl in school, and I like how they blended that while having fun with it all the way to the home stretch. Not to mention, this production is still just drop dead gorgeous. There's something with PA works and how they do backgrounds. It's just so beautiful, especially with the color palette that Buddy Daddies is using. But there's a specific moment that really caught my eye that probably no one cares about but me, but I always like these moments. So when they initially go to that high-end clothing store, there's a moment where our two boys are looking at a clothing rack, and if you look at the mannequins wearing the suits, the way they stylized the suits to make it look different from what they were wearing, I just thought it was a nice little detail. It almost gave me the impression like they're trying to say, this is some high-end stuff, it's different than what they're wearing. And in doing so, it kind of sets the stage for when she eventually goes to school, when they're looking like wannabe hipsters and stuff. It just makes them stand out like a sore thumb. And I thought they did a really good job at using the background as a way to kind of set the mood for what was to come. And I just like this show. It's a blast to follow, it makes me laugh, it can tug on the heartstrings as seen by last week, but it just has a good blend and there's nothing quite like it this season other than Buddy Dice. It really carved its own unique spot and I mean from your boy Conming to Akiba Maid War to Buddy Daddies, PA Works doesn't miss. They really never do. They've always been good. I mean I've been a big supporter of them for over 10 years but man there's something about the last few years of them that just they went in a new territory and I absolutely love what they're doing. But of course I'll pass the torch over to you. What did you think of Buddy Daddies episode 4? Did you like it as much as myself? I'm loving the dynamic of the daycare and everything but let me know what you're feeling down below leave like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here ring that bell if you want to get as many notifications to the channel as possible and as i mentioned full live reaction is available on my patreon and while you're there you'll also get a video shout out like spectra steelwater and stephanie alala are getting today so i appreciate the support so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one